With what I presume is just one episode left until this series is done, every single one that have ever been in the series comes back to for a quick cameo. And although one could say that the gathering scene should have done with a little bit more uh, high uh, spirits, uh, I have to still say that even if it wasn't with high spirits, uh, the music that they picked for that moment was just right. It was just right. As we conclude the Acnologia story arc, the question is, is this really satisfying enough to, well, for the mad dragon to have a backstory? And, uh, well, in a way, I feel yes. Of course, there could have been more, but I also feel like it shouldn't have been more. This did raise questions, yes, I know that, but it also did answer the questions that I actually guessed last time. Yes, this is the fairy tale final series, episode 50. Just one more before well, everything end. And in this uh, one, Acnologia's uh, origin flashback is actually concluded. It was indeed revealed that he was the only survivor of his village. And the dragons he thought he could trust were no trusted at all causing a very deep-seated and uncontrollable anger to be boiled inside him. And that was, exactly as we guessed, the time he decided to learn Dragon Slayer magic. However, unlike all the other Dragon Slayers, he was the most ruthless one. And yes, not only because of the dragons, because even before he became Acnologia, the Dragon Slayer, or the Dragon King, he was actually very merciless to even humans because he believed that any human that submitted to a dragon, befriended a dragon, or even just had to sacrifice themselves to prolong their lives to a dragon were beneath him as well. So his hatred for humans do not only stem from the fact that he considered himself above them. He considered even humans that wanted to befriend dragons pathetic or humans that sell their out their own kind to prolong their own life. So his hatred for huma humanity is not that black and white as we thought, or grey and grey as we thought it was. It was actually in combination with his hatred to dragons. Yes, it's unstable and doesn't really make sense that much. Well, it makes sense, but more of what I mean by that, I'm more and more of the sense of it. It had a reason. It wasn't just because he became a dragon who hated humans. His hatred for humanity is because of his hatred for dragons. And uh, Acnologia at that time forgot his old name. As the Dragon Slayer magic consumed him, so did his hatred. His hatred only grew more and more and more as he slayed all dragons. And as I suspected, he took the name of Acnologia because... Uh, well, I didn't suspect this, but... I believed that he took the name Acnologia because he wanted to forever remember the dragon that took uh, his family away from him. And in a way... This is exactly what, what he did. He forgot his own name. We never remembered his old name. So he took the name of the one dragon he would never forget. The dragon he believed he could trust. The dragon who destroyed everything. The dragon he has the most hatred for. Acnologia. And sooner or later, the dragon slave magic consumed him completely and he became a dragon. Thus, Acnologia, the dragon king. That concludes the flashback on Acnologia's origin. As we're back in the present, Grey realizes that he can still make a ship. So he takes Leon and Yuvia to make the ship. Well, Yuvia can't make a ship, but she can certainly use the water to, lev to levitate it. As then the, the dragon slayers inside of uh, the end before time still fights on Acnologia. They cannot really put a dent to him a single bit, but they refuse to give up. Even though Acnologia steep, steep, yeah, keep insisting that no matter what they do, they can never scratch him. So, uh, but elsewhere, the team of, uh, but Natsu also points out uh, the fact that uh, uh, even if you live to destroy dragons, then aren't you a dragon yourself? Real dragons are kind-hearted and and nice people. Uh, as both all these dragon slayers here have experienced dragon parents. So for them, 
Dragons were kind. But Acnologia saw none of that. As he is reminded of the flashback of his past, Acnologia finally snaps and decides to fully destroy them. But not so with Wendy's help as long as all the other Dragon Slayers get their magic power into him as a rainbow, flower, rainbow flame gets created. Iprun concludes that he will defeat him, although Acnologia still smiles. Outside though, the mm, Lushi and Co. has finally reached um, Hörengurum, as it's revealed that this is the port where Lushi met Natsu and Happy for the first time. In a way we can say this is a book ends. They met here at this port, had their first uh, battle together at this port, and the final battle for the fate of the world is in this port. As Ferris Swear is uh, prepared, as along with all the markings, everyone joins hands to channel the magic as Ersa and Mira f manage to, to throw Acnologia on the ship. Especially Ersa, who throws every single blade she can at Acnologia's back. Seeing that Acnologia only absorbs magic, he does not absorb blood damages. Lanon on the ship temporarily stuns uh, Acnologia as uh, everyone releases their magic power to uh, create Theris Sphere. And although it looks for the first time, it is still not enough. But then, as all hope seems lost, Melody appears, revealing that she has linked up to everyone. And it's here that the very beautiful magic score that is the fairy tale theme is played, as we see cameos from practically every single character ever, almost at least. Yes, that includes even anime or original characters. Even from way the back to the Phantom Place or many things more. Even a disgusting, well, guys from actually is foreign, actually came from Raymaster at the first time. But yeah, every single one. We, um, we were probably missing someone, but uh, we are seeing them. We are seeing uh, all the flashbacks as fairy tale theme is playing. We see them all beaming up their magic powers to everyone. As the hyped theme is playing, the team of um, the team that is Fairy Tale tries their best to use the Fairy Sphere again. And although we don't hear them all screaming, they all conclude with that power. Fairy Sphere is complete, but the question is though, uh, is it still enough? Well, the thing is that the sh the episode ends before we'll see who wins this final blow as Acnologia's insanity has truly and utterly been destroyed. Rainbow Flame versus, uh, versus the darkness void of uh, nothing. As Natsuya says that you can't end this on your own anymore, can you? Possibly implying that uh, he feels pity for Acnologia's immense rage, who is uncontrollable. And in a way that it's true, Acnologia's anger has completely consumed him, but he is trapped inside Ferrisphere, which means that the motion sickness will kick in. Every single one in the entire world of fairy tale used their magic. Well, perhaps at least not people we didn't know, but all of them used their powers to to well trap Acnologia in there. So you will have to look at it in a way. If people are complaining that Acnologia, who is supposed to be so unbeatable, is actually being beatable now, then you have to look at it in a bit different picture. And that is the fact that it took every single magic from every single person in the world, including anime care only characters, to even trap Acnologia inside Fairy Sphere. You have to look at it that at least that's something, right? Every single human in the world almost trapped Acnologia in this one. You have to look at it in a way that if you feel like Acnologia can't, can't be defeated by that, then you are naive. Every single person in the world against Acnologia. Yeah, if all, everyone had a one powerful power together, then I believe they would win, not Acnologia despite his might. 
But yeah, we saw even or anime original characters, including the doll of uh, the of uh, Lucius' little sister. Well, not little sister, but you know, you should watch the anime of that one. It is surprisingly emotional, that uh, scene. The scene with that doll in the anime is actually one of the few anime or original scenes that actually makes me cry completely. But I do not lie, we did see practically everyone we have already seen in this journey. Well, except maybe one, but there's no telling what happened to him. Regardless, this is this episode. The next episode is the finale. Acnologia's end is at hand, I just know it. And so is Fairytale Final Series. But give me your thoughts, if you have any.